the truth is, if you're his age, there hasn't been a lot to get excited it's about if nothing. you're a Browns fan. I, I oh. wish, man, I don't record people out in public. I, I, sh I was at my barbershop in Harlem C as this news broke. And it was just over the next 30 minutes, a wave of people walking in the door. <laughs> Do you hear the Giants traded Beckham? <laughs> the look around. Hey, man, it says they traded Beckham. This it was just the exact opposite. It was just, it was on repeat. Every four minutes, someone that walks in, curses. I mean, can you believe that? Did you see the guy that was crying? His wife told me he was crying. It was like he couldn't believe the couldn't trade. Couldn't believe it. We take our football serious in Ohio. That's great. Good That's stuff. Happy for Browns fans. It is now time for your AT&T wake-up call. Joe Flacco will be the quarterback for the Denver Broncos next season. According to John Elway, the 34-year-old Flacco is just entering his prime. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. In fact, I'm going to say it again. Elway said Flacco is just entering his prime. See, why are you guys laughing? Good Lord, there's something in the air. Now, I know several years ago they did something with legislation in Colorado. Yeah. Made something <laughs> legal. Mm -hmm. Elway, bro, you got to stop smoking and drinking. See, ain't no weed strong enough to make you think Joe Flacco's in. No, they time. have some stuff, man, to make you change your mind. <laughs> stuff bring you up in the morning, lay you down at night. This right, come on, stop. There's no quarterback that's his age. I mean, who is he? Like, because he played the best game he ever played in Mount High State, right. and you think that that's all he's going to get every week? Listen, there's a long history of NFL quarterbacks being bad for five years, and then all of a sudden, they're <laughs> John Elway, you can run my football team, but you can't, if you promise, you can't pick, pick the, the quarterback. quarterback. Right. You can pick all the other positions. All right, to another quarterback now, Teddy Bridgewater will remain on the Saints roster. He signed a one-year, $7 million deal to remain in New Orleans, that after contemplating a move to the Miami Dolphins. See, good move by Teddy? I think it's a good move because the Dolphins couldn't give him the confidence that he would be the yep. starter there. You don't want to get into a competition with Ryan Tannehill because I believe that in that competition, benefit of the doubt, they're going to give it to the guy who's there. Good decision coming back one more year with the Saints. I want to see Teddy be a starter in this league, and I think we will will again at some point. Well, I said yesterday, unless the Dolphins told him, we're going to cut Tannehill if you say yes, then I'd stay in New Orleans. One more year there, I don't think Drew Brees is going to keep playing past this season, can he? And Teddy's still young. And he's going to hit free agency again. Yep. All right, let's move on to the Steelers now. No longer the killer bees. That will happen when you lose two of your three bees. This team filled the offseason with drama between Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and Big Ben. Former Steelers tight end Jesse James recently signed with the Lions and said he was, quote, glad to get away from Pittsburgh and the drama of last year. CC, is the drama in Pittsburgh now behind them with A.B. and L. Bell gone? No. No, absolutely. It's not behind them because the drama was okay when they were winning. Man, the Pittsburgh Steelers are about winning. Drama or no drama. Oh, would you rather have no drama and them not have a good football team? Because they got to retool this whole thing. I believe that now that they're under the spotlight more so because of the talent that went out the door that didn't have to go out the door. So all eyes will be on the Pittsburgh Steelers to see how they respond. Before the season starts, I'm pretty confident they're going to give Ben Roethlisberger a contract extension. So Ben don't have no one else to blame now, and I think that with all the news that's come out of Pittsburgh the last six to nine months, people start to see who the real Ben Roethlisberger is. So I just believe him and Mike Tomlin, they have more pressure on them now than at any other point in their career. So no, it's a man, it, Pittsburgh's about winning, and they don't have a championship caliber roster. That's the biggest drama that's going on there now. They might have less drama next year. They definitely have less talent. And th th this new trend in the NFL, which is f coaches and front offices deciding, you know what, it's not really part of my job description to deal with the drama that comes along with super talented, maybe a little entitled, egotistical players. So let's just move on from them. To quote, I, I thought Kevin Clark put it great, quoting Don Draper, that's what the money's for. You are paid to deal with let's call them flamboyant personalities, to figure out a way to make it work. And for the Steelers to, listen, Jesse, James, I get it. You're saying it's, you're going to go to a more neutral situation in Detroit. It is neutral in Detroit because nobody talks about Detroit. Nobody cares. Like, one of the, there were eyeballs on the Steelers, not because of the drama, because of the talent. And then the talent also had a lot of drama associated with it. But the idea that the Steelers can be in a better position 
if they removed the drama and kept the talent, that would be ideal. That wasn't on the menu for them. So instead, they maybe removed the drama, but the quarterback's been a big source of it. Like, how do we think Juju and Big Ben are gonna get along come week nine, week 10? I don't know, but I know they won't have the elite level playmakers they had before. Right, to defend Jesse James and what he's saying, because there's a lot more role players on NFL teams than there are superstars. Sure. And role players shouldn't have to answer the questions about your superstars. And that's what this roster was put under the strain of all the time. There's nothing um, worse than when you're on a team and a reporter asks you a question, not about the game, not about you and your performance. Like what happened with the offensive line when El Bell kept deciding. Absolutely, and now they have to keep trying to justify this behavior because if not, they're not going to be a good that's teammate. That's totally fair. So when you have role players and they're putting these speaking roles about, man, what do you think about El Bell not being here? He can't tell the truth, so he's lying the whole time. Oh man, I'm looking forward to James <laughs> Conner. Man, he's a great guy in the locker room. Looking forward to seeing. I believe he could be a thousand yard rusher. Like we're gonna keep lie after lie. It gets it, you get tired of doing that. And a lot of players in the NFL locker room, they're not superstars. You know what they want to do? They want to come to work and go home. And come to work and go home. But when you constantly put them in this, oh man, I gotta, I gotta cover for this guy, I gotta cover for that guy. Right. It becomes harder for them to do their job. And you make a good point. Is the drama gone now that those two are out of the way, or is there still going to be drama? Perhaps they didn't exactly get rid of all the drama in the locker room. All right, for the Giants now, lingering questions about why they traded Odell Beckham yesterday. They added Golden Tate to a four-year, nearly thirty-eight million dollar deal to try and replicate Beckham's production. Tate was the best receiver still available in free agency. In addition, according to reports, the New York Giants may not add a quarterback in this season's draft. All right, see, what do you make of the Giants' plan? Man, they don't have a plan if they don't get a quarterback. Now, I, I'll give a little side on that. Maybe they don't draft a quarterback, but they better trade for one. They trade for Josh Rosen, they don't have to draft someone. Then I can agree with your plan. When you but say trade for one, just to be clear, it's specifically just Josh Rosen, right? There's not another. Yes, point. unless something else comes up that I, like we don't know right. about. But you know, you can't. Like if you cannot not, not draft someone and trade for another quarterback. And for me, that it's a perfect spot for Josh Rosen. You want to keep Eli another year? Okay, I'm cool with that. All the front upfront money with Josh Rosen, that's out the way. Man, you get a bargain basement for a young talent. And I believe that he's a good, as good a thrower that's going to be in the NFL coming out in this year's draft and or next year's draft. So I would give it a chance, but I wouldn't come out of this draft free agent trading without a quarterback for the future because I don't believe in the plan that you have. And coming out of this process without a quarterback, I don't know what you're going to tell your fan base because we know you've been lying because we know you told us you didn't sign Odell Beckham to trade him. Right. Like fan base, you can only lie to them so much. They really need a concrete plan and they can't leave those first three rounds of the draft and are through trading and not be able to tell the fan base, you know something, this is the confidence that you should have in us in moving forward. And Nick. the Giants and their fans should understand that if they are going to get a quarterback, it is going to involve a trade. Now that might be trading up in the draft or it might be trading for Josh Rosen. You know how high I've been on Rosen since his time at UCLA. If they move, if they made a move for him, to me that would be the best move Dave Gettleman has made in his tenure as a Giants general manager by a wide margin. But Giants fans should not think you can sit there at six and one of these quarterbacks is going to be there. Since 2012, four times a quarterback has gone number one in the draft. Every single one of those times, the next quarterback went off the board second or third. So when, when you're in a draft where a quarterback goes one, mm -hmm. and it, it's not very often a quarterback goes one. It was last time that happened, Cam Newton went one, and a quarterback didn't go until number eight, and it was Jake Locker, and that was because that was a reach. So the point I'm making is, if we think Kyler Murray is going one to somebody, the Giants should not feel comfortable when you sit there at six and Haskins will be there. History says, no, he will not. You're going to have to use some of that draft capital you got for Odell Beckham 
to move up to And from a verbiage standpoint, Gettleman, they have to be able to say things like that. They have to keep a balance in the NFL because the NFL thinks at six that they're definitely going to take a quarterback. Someone then someone can jump right in front of them and be able to steal their prospect. Are we just talking Kyler Murray and Dwayne Haskins as the only options you both feel would be good and well suited for the Giants? Or is there someone else you'd feel comfortable them uh, taking to be I'm the next I'm already disturbed guy? that they traded Odell Beckham. And if they don't get one of the top two quarterbacks, I don't have any confidence in the quarterbacks after that. Yeah. Like I would really be questioning as far as the New York Giants, their scouting department, and really what is the plan going forward? Yeah, I don't. I have no idea how on earth you could try to sell anyone on. Listen, don't worry. At, at 17, we're going to overdraft Drew Locke or the they kid just from sold Duke, the Jones. selling Odell Beckham, well, trading Odell Beckham. Yeah, listen, they. Rosen, Haskins, Kyler, one of those three names, if one of those three names is on the Giants roster at the beginning of next year, then we can see the semblance of a plan. Yes. If not, mm -hmm. That's a good point. then they're just then it's just another year of the Eli Manning farewell tour, and maybe the Giants will get back to being a real NFL football team in 2020. But the bottom line is Eli will be there next year because either any of those three could sit behind him for at least one more year. Well, that was the other thing that was reported. They're not going to ask him to take a pay cut. They're going to let this $5 million I was roster ask how that sat with you. You've no, been on this from no, the early on. No, Eli's earned it. Either make him make him the highest paid player in NFL history. He deserves it. I'm happy for him. Good news is that doesn't bother you at all. Mm -mm, at, not at all. Oh, not one little bit. Got to take a break. Coming up.